All right, we're here at my Birmingham Indoor Worm Bin, and the first thing I notice is the piece of newspaper that was intact last time we were in here has been disintegrated by the worms. And I think that's because we put all those oats all over the top, and they are just munching down on that. So that's pretty interesting. Now, this has been a series of side feedings that we've been doing in here. In fact, a lemon was the first one and it was right here. And then we did a piece of scoby that was over here. And then the last one we did was a half a banana. And I can see this whole edge is sloped down pretty severely. So we'll go ahead and check on all of those. And then we're also gonna do our last side feeding here. And something I want you to look at as we're going through and digging around is, this is about what it should look like when you are ready to put this particular tray, your top tray, underneath to finish turning into castings. This one is gonna get its last feeding and then it'll go underneath. We'll put a new tray on top and this one will sit under there for about another 60 days without us disturbing it at all and it will turn into complete castings. All these little pieces of paper and any little food scraps will get just demolished into castings and it'll be ready for harvest. So let's go ahead and start going into those side feedings and seeing how this bin looks. So over here was the lemon and I'm not gonna spend too much time because we checked it and the lemon was completely gone. Anything that was over here was completely gone. But as you can see, the worms don't mind. They are all throughout it and really chunky worms. I mean, like this one right here, you can see really well it's clitellum. And you know, this one right here too, just lots of good, fat, healthy worms. So let's go ahead and check on that SCOBY, which was right here and see if it completely disappeared. The worms were surrounding it. I wouldn't necessarily say they formed a worm ball over it or anything, but there's something right here, which we'll have to see what this is. This is banana stems, but right here was something just kind of gooey feeling. And I think what we have is the SCOBY. So it's shrinking, that's for sure. It's definitely not as thick as it was. And there were a bunch of worms all over it. So they are attacking it. I would say that it's maybe not their favorite food, but I would say they're still eating it. They're, they're definitely making their way with it. So that is interesting. And it's a lot more gushy and kind of pliable and, and wet. So they're making inroads with it. And it has been in here for about 19 days. So we'll just kind of set that to the side and, and put it back after we check the rest of this feeding zone right here. Now there's all kinds of maybe tiny food scraps in here that we can't see that they are attacking. And also they're attacking the bedding. All bedding is food. So they're gonna be taking that and eating it and turning it into castings, but not all food is bedding. So when you're doing a worm bin, you don't wanna just put all nitrogen or all food scraps. You really do need to have carbon in there for them. So this is looking great. And as you can see, this looks like, I would say, probably 85% castings. A lot of little chunks of individual pieces of cardboard and little fibery things from food scraps. But when your bin is looking like this, I'm sorry, when your tray for your worm tower is looking like this, this is a good time to put another tray on top and start the new tray as your active feeding tray. And we're gonna do that in the next video, but this one is just gonna kinda be a check on the last bit of side feedings. So let's go into this side over here, and this is where the most recent feeding zone was. And in this one, we put a piece of banana that was cut in half and then splayed open. So it should be interesting to see how they do with it. In addition to that, we had some celery, we had some strawberry tops, we had some apples, that kind of thing. So We'll see if that kind of brings all the worms out into maybe a little bit of a worm ball. But yeah, so far the worms are looking great all through here. And I think we did put it kind of deep. I'm not seeing anything over here on this side towards the front. I am seeing a lot of castings. In fact, we might have been able to put this underneath maybe last time. Look at this, this is the tomato. That's right, we put some chunks of tomato in here and they really attack those. I know it says to limit them on the Vermihut instructions, but I find that tomatoes are no issue whatsoever for them. And again, any of those foods that it says to limit, you can put in small amounts. All right, right here is where the banana was, and I'm surprised we haven't run into the peel at all. And I think this right here may be 
about what's left of it. Now it's been 11 days, which is typically longer than I take between feedings. The interval has been a little bit longer. We went on vacation and then I just came down with a little head cold. So I haven't been in here for a while, but they really took to that banana. And that banana had some mold in it and it had been pretty old and then it was frozen. So it was definitely ripe for them to start attacking it. I don't know if you can tell, but right here, I just have an absolute mound of material, which is another reason to let this tray go down and put another one on top when you're running out of room. But okay, I think we have checked the whole feeding zone over here on this side. So let's go ahead and put it back down in here. And now let's go ahead and dig this area out right here for its last feeding. And I'll also put that kombucha scoby here because after we feed this feeding, we're not gonna be checking on this for a while. This tray has plenty of bedding and we're trying to get it down to casting, so I don't really see a need to put any more bedding in right now. And this is what we had in mind for the feeding. We've got some lettuce, some celery, we've got some garden scraps, which this lettuce was for my garden. See if anybody can recognize what this is. This is what happens to broccoli when you let it go too long and it flowers. So the broccoli flowers are yellow. I don't know if broccoli produces other color flowers, but let me know in the comments if you know. But I really enjoy broccoli, but it's got about a day or two before you need to pick it and then boom, all kinds of flowers. And I let one of them go. This was probably one of them so that the bees come around. But we also have some strawberries some apples and some banana peels. So let's go ahead and start the feeding. All right, so this romaine lettuce head will actually go pretty quick. The celery takes a little bit longer, but the strands are what takes the longest with it. Then we've got some slower foods like apple, and then we'll put in the lettuce. Of course, banana peels are always a hit with them. And these are some of our homegrown strawberries. And then carrots, we have so many carrots growing. I love going out there and just snacking on a carrot as I'm doing my morning garden inspection. And here's the rest of that broccoli. You can really get a good look of the flowering nature of it when you kind of let it go a little bit too long. But you know, if you let it go longer, you can let it go to seed and then you can use those seeds to do sprouts. All right, let's get this last bit in there. And I think our feeding zone is set up. So let's go ahead and put the amendments that we like to put in here. I'll start with some pulverized oats. And this is just because I found a package that has been expired for four years. So I've got a lot of oats. And then we always put in some pulverized eggshells for grits. They have gizzards, it helps them to grind up their food for digestion. And then we've got some coffee. That was just another food source for them. All right, let's go ahead and get this covered up. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button. I really appreciate that. And if you like the different things that you see me doing with these bins, different experiments and stuff, go ahead and subscribe so you'll be notified when I put out a new video if you hit that bell icon. And I've got two other bins. I've got a outdoor worm bin and a tiny worm bin. And we're gonna go ahead and put this piece of SCOBY right there and bury it up. And kind of the last thing I'm gonna do as far as feeding this is I'm gonna put oats right on top of it and I'm not going to put a newspaper so just the oats and we'll sprinkle this all over I really enjoyed seeing the fact that they ate all the oats and they went after that newspaper I don't know if it's kind of a they eat and they eat carbon at the same time but that was pretty cool and the final thing we're going to do is we're going to put another inoculating tray on the very bottom of this vermi hut right now it has three trays and that one will be our fourth and here it is. All I did was put shredded cardboard and paper. I didn't wet it down, I didn't do anything, but it is going to go on the very bottom and all the juices and anything can drip down into here and the worms can even explore it if they want, but let's go ahead and do that. So one, two, three. All right, this is down on the bottom. So let's bring in the rest of the vermi hut and we are complete. So hope everybody is having a great day and happy vermicomposting everybody. Take care now.